he was hey, I was trying to go he the dropped court. the ball. Here's what's funny, Bird. <laughs> uh-huh. He was so excited to get to the one, two, three. He almost stumbled at the <laughs> end. I was like, man, that, hey, it was clean. It and was then clean. It was like, clean. Hey, look, look, look. Hey, look. <laughs> hey, he got too excited. I he got wanted, excited, big team. He wanted to get to it. I fumbled the ball in the goal line. <laughs> it's okay. I picked it. it up. I got it. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, he lost it again. Oh. He was trying to hurry up and pass the baton. I was going too fast. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank uh, you, sir. What's next, Big T? All right, so it's time for the Major League Baseball Pennant Report by Stats, our man, our baseball guru. Take it away, Stats. Fresh out the dugout. There you go. Out the dugout. <laughs> hey, he's been I called sure in for relief. He's been called in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. More oh, yeah. Like, like holding a paddle. But anyway, <laughs> Steady Freddy. Sweat in the Twin Cities <laughs> and the <laughs> injury disease. It's not even a bug. It's a Steady disease Freddy. for some. Steady Freddy. Me and my father, we were able to attend our fourth big league game together this week. Awesome. In Atlanta. My seventh, personally. Awesome. The Dodgers and Braves perhaps never had the stakes as high as they did for this September matchup on Monday night. The Dodgers only led the Padres by four games. They had been playing badly over the first two games of the series. And they won Sunday. Uh, but the Braves were still one game behind in the wild card standings thanks to taking the first two from L.A. Max Free pitched for the Braves. And in 22, when we saw Freddie Freeman hit in his emotional ret- return to Truist Park, he didn't hit. 0 for 4. I picked him to get a hit on the MLB app hmm. this time because of that. And not only did the Dodgers win the game, which they lost in heartbreaking fashion in the 8th back in 22, they blew out the Braves. 9 to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Mookie Betts gunned down a runner going home in the fifth. And by the time Freddie Freeman launched a three-run homer in the ninth to rub salt in the wound, the Braves fans had already hit the road. As I pointed out to my father, a line of cars streaming out the stadium in the seventh inning. <laughs> the Mets won Monday night also. And they retained the two-game edge for the final spot that they had when we left Atlanta the following morning, despite winning the series from the Reds. Sweating in the Twin Cities. In mid-May and late June, (laughs) the Detroit Tigers had given their fans, many of whom I have been friends with over the years, nothing to look forward to in terms of a playoff race. They lost two of their best infield veterans, Javier Baez and Gio Urshela. Then they left me and my good friend Steve, a loyal Tigers fan from Detroit, thinking the team was done, following them losing 10 out of 12, an event that set them spiraling in the wildcard standings to six games back at that point while their counterparts in the division like Cleveland, Kansas City, and Minnesota all simultaneously caught fire. And they sold away more veterans at the deadline, like Mark Hanna and the aforementioned Urshela. <laughs> it appeared the Tigers weren't making the playoffs, nor would they win games unless their ace was pitching, Tariq Schoolball, who Steve joked with me it was always a full send when Tariq Schoolball went for the Tigs. And his arsenal was on full display in the League Classic. That game in August marked the turning point for the Tigers. And one of the more improbable playoff runs I've seen since the Nationals 19 run, when they too seemed dead in the water, the Tigers won every series except for one against San Diego. They won series over the Orioles, the Yankees, and Royals, all playoff teams right now. The sweep over the aforementioned Royals this week in Kansas City pulls them to within half a game of the Twins. And the Twins have averted to their 2022 versions of themselves. In that season, their wild card hopes went up in smoke in Northern Ohio due to an inability from their relief pitchers to have clean innings. They had leads in every game of the series just to lose two out of three, and it cost them the playoffs in the season's final weekend. The same thing happened to them this week, but this time it was a rookie for the Guardians, Kyle Manzardo, who provided the fireworks for Cleveland with a go-ahead homer in the first game, which Cleveland parlayed to a series win, and today they won again, and now the Tigers are tied with the Twins for the final spot. The Injury Disease the game of baseball is played every day, from February to October if you're lucky enough, and injuries can derail a team's chances at even an expanded playoff spot now that there are three. I learned this in 2018 with the Dodgers when they had a massive division lead, but they lost it <laughs> due to injuries to Bellinger and Muncie, and they fortunately held on to it on the extra day of the season, a tiebreaker game against the Rockies that determined the West Crown that they won. The team still almost got swept by Boston in the World Series that year. The legs were gone. <laughs> the Braves fans I encountered in Atlanta, and the ones I know personally, have enlightened me on the depth of their team's injuries. The fans I met at the hotel before the game, I wish luck before Monday showdown, but did feel a level of sympathy for, as the Braves are currently unrecognizable from teams we saw for the four, past four or five years, and almost all of their real production is gone because Matt Olson and Marcelo Zuna are pressing to replace the void of season-ending inju- injuring, injuries. Eh, to Ronald Acuna and Austin Riley. 
After seeing a player who the Dodgers cut after a cup of coffee in early spring, Craig Biggio, who couldn't even stay on the Blue Jays, hitting only 198 in a pinch hitting spot for the Braves in the late innings on Monday, I asked my father the question, how many injuries do these guys have? <laughs> Lots. <laughs> Pointing out that Biggio couldn't even stay on Toronto, a team who will inevitably be inevitably be on the couch in the next two weeks. Despite <laughs> Vladimir Guerrero's juniors claim that he is on another level. And congratulations to Shohei Otani today for accomplishing the 50-50 feet. 50, 50. And also Bobby Witt Jr. yesterday. First shortstop in the history of baseball to have 25 home, no, 30 homers and 30 steals. And that's unbelievable. Yeah. Honestly. But yeah. I guess the yeah. shortstop part is what you don't think of. There yeah. have been players to do it. To do it, Just yeah. not a shortstop. Not a shortstop. This guy which, is an unbelievable hitter. Which is crazy with all the great shortstops you've had. Yeah, Larkin oh. never did it. Yeah, it's just. Like, wow. what? <laughs> Jeter never even probably sniffed that. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it, the guys are just crazy nowadays. Yeah. Crazy good. Nope. But that's all I have. Thank you, Stan. And uh, the Dodgers. Oh, clinches. Yeah, I'm so go, ahead. yeah Bird, go ahead. Give us the clinches. Birdman, Yankees clinched. Give us the clinch. Yes, Playoffs I yesterday. I know that's going to make that. Bird And the happen. Brewers, this is hilarious. This is the NL Central. Mm-hmm. They couldn't even win the clinch. The Cubs had to lose <laughs> because they lost. So they just lost and went to the clubhouse and just were like, all right, I guess we'll celebrate because the Cubs lost. Because the Cubs lost. But it was kind of just like, We backed into the division. Right. <laughs> kind of anticlimactic. Yeah. Hey, I'll take it. <laughs> I mean, at least Either they get way. to rest, guys, yeah, yeah. so they can lose in the first round like last year. Yeah. <laughs> but there you go. Hey, thank you, uh, Stats. We appreciate it. And, hey, get your baseball fix uh, from our man Stats Weekly here on the Crossover Sports Show. And real quick, Big T. Yes, sir. Go ahead. On the Love and Faith Radio.